and we are live. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's now my very good pleasure to let somebody else speak. I'm very excited to have this opportunity to showcase a few of our member companies now. They have three minutes each to tell you a little bit about themselves and what's happening in their world and a little bit about their company. It's kind of like a 3MT competition. <laughs> Our very first guest today is Lisa Bako. She is the Director of Marketing. Uh, Lisa is an entrepreneur and a consultant, has worked with high-tech companies since 1994. Oh my gosh, Lisa. She is focused on <laughs> health-related initiatives. <laughs> Uh, for the last 18 years with a particular focus on novel medical devices. Lisa has worked with Cabresa since its inception in 2011 and has been involved in numerous aspects of the company, including business development, design, and coordination of inbound and outbound marketing activities, customer relationship management, as well as contract management negotiations for their new pet and brain pet clinics. Lisa, I think James should give you a promotion. <laughs> oh, I like this. Kim. Lot, I, I would you've agree. Got a lot of job duties there. <laughs> anyway, I work a lot of I'm going to let you take it away, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Thanks for that lovely introduction. I realize now that 1994 date really did date me. But anyways, uh, I, I move on. Um, thanks very much for including us today. It's really lovely to connect with everyone here. I thought I'd just give you a little bit of background on Cabresa. We are a medical device company. We design and develop clinical and preclinical PET insert systems for MRIs, enabling researchers to conduct simultaneous PET MRI imaging. Uh, first, as many of you know, Cabresa announced an addition to its preclinical product line this past year, the new PET Bio Scanner. It's the world's first lightweight and portable PET scanner, specifically designed for use in high containment facilities. Uh, the innovation was selected by Innovative Solutions Canada and supported by the Public Health Agency of Canada. And in February of this year, we were pleased to be able to install the first system at the IWK Health Centre in Halifax. And yesterday, we were happy to share early new pet bio results and in vivo images with PHAC, the National Microbiology Lab, Innovative Solutions Canada, and the National Research Council. Uh, the launch of this product has led to interest from other labs across Canada as we continue to have conversations with these centers and the federal government as to how we can roll out other systems. At uh, Cabresa, we're excited to support Canadian scientists as they look to better understand viruses like SARS-CoV-2 and as they seek effective therapeutics. Our goal is to create a network of imaging systems at Biosafety Labs, providing new high-end imaging tools to Canada's leading scientists that are doing integral work in the infectious disease space. And secondly, and no less exciting for us, was a recent announcement by Lawson Health Research Institute in London, Ontario, about their CFI funding. Lawson is a longtime partner and collaborator of Cabresa's, and we are very pleased to announce that they will be the first installation site of Cabresa's clinical insert system, our brain pet scanner. The Brain Pet is a PET scanner designed to be used in MRI systems and enables simultaneous PET MRI imaging of the brain. Uh, this clinical PET insert is designed for use by clinical research centers focused on neuro-related diseases, including brain cancers and neurodegenerative disorders. And in addition to Lawson, Cabrace is excited to be finalizing its list of foundation partners. These are early brain pet customers who are lead at leading centers in North America, and they are looking to be first to incorporate this new device into their research program. So we anticipate more announcements coming soon. But that said, uh, given that I have the opportunity, I would like to really thank everyone here. This would not be possible without the continued support from groups like Research Manitoba, BAM, ISC, PHAC, amongst others. So thank you for all you've done and continue to do as we move forward with these exciting innovations. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Awesome job. Next, next is Kelsey Friesen, who is from Delta 9. Kelsey Friesen is the Director of Sales at Delta 9. 
and he's been there for the last three years. He's going to tell us a little bit about their new DPOD and the mobile decontamination module. Okay, take it away, Kelsey. Thank you very much, Kim. No, it's a pleasure being here. And that's tough to follow uh, Lisa. Uh, she's uh, well-spoken. And I met her backstage. And it, was, it was definitely a pleasure. But no, thanks again for uh, BAM to, to uh, uh, invite us on this talk today. And uh, yeah, Delta 9, I'm, I'm sure everyone in Manitoba has heard... Uh, a little bit about our company. We're a cannabis company, uh, but we're Delta 9 Biotech, and we've uh, we've really expanded this business to business uh, section of our of our company uh, to start producing unique offerings in terms of equipment uh, because of this uh, background that we have with growing out of grow pods. Uh, essentially, we repurpose shipping containers and turn them into equipment for uh, food food production, uh, obviously cannabis production, and our latest. Uh, and greatest, uh, I, I guess right now it's just a prototype, but we've gone through the testing right now, it's called the D-Pod. And uh, the D-Pod essentially is a repurposed shipping container uh, that we've uh, implemented some equipment in there, such as UV lighting and heat, uh, to combat numerous applications in, in terms of uh, uh, re reducing uh, uh, like bed bug issues within uh, First Nation communities. We've We've done some work with, and it kind of uh, migrated into, okay, well, COVID uh, became a thing in uh, 2020, obviously, and we uh, pivoted and turned this unit into something that could decontaminate things like hospital beds and larger pieces of equipment. And, uh, and like I said, it's a prototype right now. We've gone through three rounds of testing with a uh, local uh, uh, company called Biocision. And I'm sure BAM is very familiar with uh, Biocision here in Winnipeg. And we've uh, validated this unit and it works. Uh, the three rounds shows that it's ki it kills most microbials. And uh, we've uh, proven that it, it's good for different applications such as uh, getting rid, rid of molds and yeast like in hemp. Uh, definitely the uh, decontamination for surface, uh, uh, getting rid of microbials on the surface for equipment and uh, things like hospital beds like i said and it's we're ready to produce so in two weeks we're actually putting it on our assembly line and i'll just quickly put up the pdf of what it looks like so you guys can get the idea so this is just our slide brochure but uh there you can see the inside of the unit right there with the uv light set up and the uh, the unit gets to 170 degrees Celsius, so it's uh, quite effective uh, as a pasteurization model. Uh, there's that shipping container with a big 36-inch uh, door. You could uh, put equipment or, or anything you want to sterilize or decontaminate. Uh, even PPE can go in there on racks, which we've uh, done the validation studies with that. And that's our latest and greatest from uh, Delta 9. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Kelsey. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Our next speaker is Trevor. Trevor Gascoing from OAC. He is the Director of Operations at Orthopedic Innovation Centre. Uh, he's been with OAC for 11 years now. And OAC and the Concordia Research Group have been performing research, development and testing in the orthopedic field since 2003. When the pandemic hit, OIC staff quickly pivoted to assist their partner organization, Precision ADM, yay Precision ADM, in developing nasal swabs for COVID detection, medical N95 respirators, and other PP products for Manitobans. Trevor, I'm going to let you take it away. Sounds good. Thank you, Kim. Uh, I was a little worried there because suddenly I lost internet connection, but hopefully everyone can hear me. I see some nods. Great. Good. Um, yeah, so um, the Director of Operations here at the Orthopedic Innovation Centre, um, what we do is, uh, I mean, we're rooted in orthopedics. So since about 2003, we've been working with the surgical group out of Concordia Hospital, running clinical research trials, doing database reviews to um, basically improve the health of patients who go through hip and knee surgery. Um, 2010 is when the OIC was formally incorporated as a nonprofit uh, research and testing institute. 
And so we started out with um, obviously orthopedic devices. So we have the equipment to test the durability, longevity, uh, and the quality of, of these hip, knee, ankle replacements that are used in, in our population. Um, many surgeries happen every year. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to be a part of that, that work uh, and to be able to indirectly or directly help um, people suffering from arthritis. And as Kim mentioned, uh, based on you know the short blurb I gave her, um, like many companies, we pivoted. Uh, I'm getting tired of that word, but it's true. Um, uh, when the pandemic hit, our uh, good partners, uh, Precision ADM, realized that they have um, the ability and the engineering power to um, start creating new products to help with the COVID pandemic. And so at OIC, we quickly jumped on board with them and helped them to develop uh, Canada's first approved 3D printed nasal swab. And uh, they have, I think, as of um, maybe a few weeks ago, they've produced over 6 million for Canada. So uh, really exciting to be a part of that project in kind of the, the development and, and hands-on phase. Um, and then in the fall this year, we got a, a, a WD grant to set up uh, Western Canada's um, uh, kind of first and only um, PPE testing facility. So we can now test respirators, surgical masks to ensure that quality is maintained. Um, and again, supporting our good friend Precision ADM as they make all kinds of PPE products. Um, so um, big thank you to Kim and the whole BAM team for letting me uh, present and talk a little bit today. These are exciting networking events and a big thanks to uh, Research Manitoba, WD, Province of Manitoba, as well as our Concordia group friends. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Trevor. Thank you again. And now our last member company to speak, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ian Ian McLean. I always say Ian Colvin. I, do people do that, Ian? They no, do that, just but... No, I think Tracy used to do it too Tracy a lot. <laughs> Um, Ian is the Director of Engineering uh, at Coven Technology Canada, and he's been there since 2004. Uh, That's, probably prior to that, say, <laughs> what's that? That's probably why they say Coven. Yeah, that's probably why. Uh, prior to that, he studied engineering at the University of Manitoba and has been a professional engineer in good standing with the province of Manitoba since 2007. Congratulations to you. So Ian, tell us a little bit about What's happening in your world? Happy to, thanks, Kim. So, would you ask me Monday if I talk about some of the amazing innovation happening here? So, I'm happy to share with you a little bit about what Coven is up to. And some of you may know um, Coven Technology is a vascular diagnostics company. And as Kim mentioned, we've been here for 17 years now. And um, we develop and market medical devices that are used for vascular diagnostics, but specifically uh, peripheral arterial disease, which is uh, also called PAD. Um, this is a disease that is uh, caused by atherosclerosis. Uh, it's where plaque builds up in artery walls. And what it can do is cause blood flow to slow or even stop to, in our case, the lower extremities. And it's atherosclerosis manifested in um, lower extremities, it, but you'd recognize it from other terms like coronary artery disease and cerebral artery disease. So unfortunately, it uh, affects about a million Canadians and sadly is the leading cause of amputation for the diabetic patient. Um, right now, the current diagnostic test requires a centralized location with specialized equipment and specialized, uh, specially trained people. So it tends to make the training or the testing expensive and wait times can be quite long, actually up to two years for a screen for PAD in Manitoba. So Coven has decided to try and address this need through the use of a simple blood test. And to do that, we are looking at a diagnostic profile of metabolites. Uh, metabolites that can be measured using technology already available in many of the provincial and private laboratories. Um, by employing a blood test, we aim to 
reduce the cost, improve the wait times, and also uh, increase accessibility for Manitobans, particularly in you know rural communities, northern communities for sure, indigenous communities. And um, so to advance the innovation, uh, we're working in collaboration with um, the folks at CCARM, or St. Boniface Research Centre. And we also enjoy the support of Research Manitoba and MITAX, who brought um, excellent postdoc offers. Now, in the year ahead, we hope to complete the validation of our metabolites. We hope to test it out, um, test the concept out with a cohort of patients. And finally, it's our hope to test the cost utility also of this test uh, with real Manitoba data through the Seven Oaks Chronic Disease Innovation Center. So that's just a little bit about um, some of the exciting innovation that's happening over at Colin. And thank you very much to BAM for the okay. chance you know, to share that with all of you and also for putting on these great, excellent um, networking events. So thanks. Awesome, for thanks. Thanks so much, Ian, I appreciate the kind words. Thank you everyone and great job to all of our guests for letting each of us know a little bit about you and a little bit more about what your company is doing right now. Very exciting. So thank you again to all of you. Okay, so now for some more excitement, I'm gonna send all of you off again to do some networking and some chatting. I encourage you to ask some questions to our speakers. If you wanna know a little bit more information, try and find them and see if you can have a chat with them. Um, I actually challenge each of you to go and try and meet somebody new and go and talk to someone new and um, learn something new today. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. Jonathan, you ready to let them off for 15 minutes? <laughs>